going on, everybody? Thought we'd take a minute to level up the party real quick. Everyone's got a skill point but me. Boo-hoo. And uh, while we're at it, I'd like to talk, uh, once again, as usual, about uh, party build, character build, uh, team synergy, stuff like that. And uh, bring up something that uh, I'm kind of excited about it, actually. It came to mind, and I was like, you know, I'm going I'm to pass this along, see if I can put it in such a way as uh, people kind of get where I'm coming from. And if it applies, cool. If not, then just throw it out the window, you know, take it with a grain of salt, you know, to each their own. But uh, it's worked for me in uh, basically all the games that I played. And I thought this was a uh, perfect opportunity to bring it up. When we get to level 15, I'm going to do a complete recap on the whole uh, team build, at least the uh, the characters that are crucial to my team build, the ones that I use in particular. Uh, Varric, uh, the mages, Cassandra. Uh, Blackwall kind of secondary. I'm not a big fan of Blackwall, but uh like Cassandra a lot. Anyway, um... So we'll recap that that whole deal there and, and probably go into this uh, a little bit more in depth, too. But uh, for right now, I'd like to pass along this one thing. And uh, here's a disclaimer now, okay? This has worked for me in uh, all the RPGs that I play. It's a certain principle. It's a kind of thinking that I, I kind of set as a foundation and then build on um, when I get in. Because I'm really passionate about character builds. I, I'm as passionate about that as I am about story and stuff. You know, that's that's me. That's my thing. Some people like to micromanage um, different things in a game. Um, I think you'd find that most RPG fans will um, obsess about something. With me, it's character, team, party build, combat mechanics, and stuff like that. I, I, I really get off to that stuff. I think I, it's really fun. You know, I'm like a, a kid in a candy store when it comes to that type of stuff. Some people, it's like crafting. Other people, it's like farming and stuff like that. Um, and so on and so forth. Other people, it's story. Learning all the lore, learning all the dialogue and stuff, and man, whatever floats your boat, that's what it's about. That's what you paid your sixty bucks for, you know, to uh, to get the most out of the game and squeeze it for all it's worth. So I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, my particular thing is builds. Um, I'm gonna bring up some scenarios, and if they apply, then this may make sense. If not, well, cool. I uh, appreciate you just watching. Yeah, I, I really do. Maybe listen to me blab for a little bit here and see if there's not something you can take away from this. Uh, where you can either say, hey, that makes sense, or wow, that dude's totally full of it. <laughs> but uh, either way, um, when I leveled, uh, I'm going to use this as an example, and I'll, I'll kind of build on this, and I, I think you'll see where I'm coming from. With Cassandra, I upgraded her challenge, and it's uh, it's called Throw the Gauntlet, and what it does is it allows her to rebuild stamina, uh, regenerate stamina a lot faster, like 15 stamina per second bonus um, for a short period of time, about the same amount of time it takes for her to spam challenge again, all right? Now, keeping in mind how I have her built, I have her uh, favoriting challenge and Warcry and Shield Wall, although she doesn't use it quite as often because uh, I think Warcry and challenge come first. Um, whatever in her AI, and, and that's fine with me. Uh, but Shield Wall, when she does throw that and she successfully blocks something, it gives me guard if I'm standing near her, which I usually am. I stay pretty pretty close to Cassandra's side. Uh, me and her, you know, we're right there uh, uh, joined at the hip when we're fighting and the mages and the rogues are off doing their thing on the sidelines. At least, ideally, that's how it goes. Okay, but um, she's, uh, primarily her job is war cry and challenge. And the cool thing is, is the cooldowns are a little bit different. They don't cool down the exact same, so they're not usually ready at the exact same time. So she can do one and then the other and back and forth, okay? Um, and if she's cast war cry, and everyone around her, um, if she's drawn all their hate, and there are no more enemies to um, to aggro on the field, then she'll go to one of her secondary, what I'd call secondary abilities, like uh, Payback Strike, Shield Bash, and all that. Now, that's that serves a twofold purpose. And this is, once again, I'm trying to, like, this is how my mind is working when, when I build my team. Um, both Shield Bash and Payback Strike have the ability to stun, knock down, knock back enemies, all right? And those enemies take bonus damage, all right, um, from us, me, me specifically, all right? And so that works into party synergy also. So they're not just offensive skills, but they have uh, an overall um, team thing going on also. In other words, they serve more than one purpose. Um, I'm not a big fan of skills that just do one thing, like, oh, look at the damage this, this skill does. Well, what else does it do? Does it freeze enemies? Does it stun them? Does it paralyze them? Does it do this and do that? Um, no, it just does damage. Well, yeah, screw that then. How much does it cost? Oh, 7,000 mana? That means I can cast it and not do anything else for 20 minutes, you know. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's not for me. Um, I keep in mind um, their, their primary favorited skills, all right? And then when uh, 
there's no real need to cast that, then she can throw something else like, I say, Shield Bash and stuff like that. And what that does is it gives her um, plenty of stamina available to do her primary job, right, when she needs to. And so, um, oh, what do I mean by primary job? Her job is to draw attention. Her job is not to be an assassin damage dealer. Her job is not to be a healer. Her job is not to, um, well, even though she's a Templar, even though she has the Seeker abilities, all right, her job is not to be dispelling all enemy magic, okay? Her job, in fact, uh, just don't worry about dispelling magic. Kill the mages. You know what I'm saying? And th they won't be casting spells if they're dead type of thing. But um, uh, her job is to uh, draw the hate, um, absorb damage, take it, stay on her feet, all right? And... Um, the mage's job is to keep her, and myself also, secondary, but to keep her on her feet, all right? And then their second job is to do a little damage, and um, when they are doing damage, they're also managing the battlefield a little bit also, okay? Now remember, this is in mind that I am building this for a two-handed warrior that I'm playing. If I was playing a rogue or a mage, I'd be building this a little different. And I will actually get into that when I actually play a rogue. And I may play a mage also, I'm not the biggest mage fan, but... um. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are. In fact, I would say probably more than half the players prefer to play a mage for whatever reason. It's, it's not really my thing. I like the warrior and then uh, I like the rogue just as much, just differently. Um, but when I get into a rogue build, you'll see I'll change things up. I'll change um, um, the preferred skills that I have um, my mages doing, for example. My tank will pretty much you know, stay the same. The tank is, is pretty much... Um, uh, the bread and butter of your party in that um, your tank's job is to draw the hate and keep it, okay? If the hate's on your tank, then it's not on you, and that means you can stay on your feet long enough because um, the tank's supposed to be durable, and everyone else is uh, traditionally kind of squishy. What that means is you can't take so much damage, you know? But your tank is just, just what the word describes. It should be able to uh, just absorb ungodly amounts of punishment, stay on their feet, and then when they're about to die, get fully rehealed again to piss off the enemy that the enemy can't kill them, all right? And uh, so, with that in mind, that's what I have my tank assigned to do, and that's what abilities I give my tank. I don't have a whole bunch of different active abilities for my tank to keep a track of, okay? Favorite war cry, favorite challenge, uh, favorite shield wall, I do that, but like I say, um, she tends to use that less. Or she seems to, anyway. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. As long as she's war crying and challenging, that's, that's her main job. Everything else comes secondary. All right, and so um, I upgrade her challenge because now that she's unlocked her specialist tree, okay, um, she also has the the added role of um, buffing the party. Now a lot of her passives buff the party as it is, all right, and a lot of her uh, Templar secret tree are also um, passives that buff the party. But she does have that one active ability where she throws a ring down on the ground, and everyone in that ring does more damage. Which is essentially me and her, right? And so, since we're in there in the middle of the enemy, um, doing our thing, and the mages are supposed to be back there, you know, keeping a barrier up so we don't we don't get knocked down. And if we do get knocked down, they can revive us, all right? That's their assigned job, and we'll get in that into that in a minute, all right? But uh, seeing as now that her specialist tree is unlocked, all right, the one extra thing that I'm that I'm asking her to do, I want her to have the stamina to do it, okay? It's not that she can't do all those abilities, it's that I want her to always be able to perform her primary job when she needs to, which is all the time. Alright, and so if Warcry is on cooldown, alright, as soon as it's ready, I want her to be able to cast it. She needs to have the stamina there to do it. She's not going to if she has Payback Strike, Lunge and Slash, um, Shield Bash, grappling chain, combat roll, and all this other crap active, okay, she's going to be flipping and zipping and doing all this other stuff. Guess what she's not doing? She's not drawing the hate. Her one primary job where if she doesn't do anything else, I'm all right with it, is drawing aggro and, and keeping her guard up, right, and keeping that aggro, keeping all the hate on the battlefield towards herself. That's her job. If that's all she did, I'd be cool with it. If she didn't do any jam damage at all, which she will, your tank's always going to be doing basic attacks. They're going to be swinging their sword, you know, give them a decent weapon, and they can do some damage, all right? And then any offensive um, abilities they do have should also benefit the party, like Shield Bash and uh, Payback Strike can both knock down and stun enemies, all right? That plays into team synergy. I do bonus damage to enemies that are knocked down and stunned and blah, 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 and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so keeping all that in mind is... What skills um, complement everyone else, all right? That don't just do something, you know, don't, don't pick selfish skills, all right? That's my advice. 
um, pick skills that benefit the entire party. Okay? And then um, make sure... <laughs> Throw Varric across with a rope attached to him to get us to the other side. That'd be funny. All right. But, um, all right. So assign them their primary job, give them the means to do it, and don't ask them to do too much. Don't ask them to be a uh, tank, assassin, rogue, healer, templar, elementalist, blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. If they're if they're tank, let them tank. If they're DPS, let them DPS, you know, and so on and so forth. If they're a healer, let them heal. Well, in this case, it'd be throwing up barrier, but whatever. Pre-healing, for lack of a better term. But whatever the case may be. Um, okay. Now, see, I go down right here because of super uh, laser icicles over there. Freaking asshole. All right. I want my mage on her own, as soon as it's available, to raise me up. All right. So, uh, she's going to wait till she has enough mana to do so. And there you go. Okay, she's got me raised up. Now, her mana pool is probably empty. All right. She's going to have to let that regen. If I have her um, with, oh, I don't know, what, lightning bolt, electric static cage, electric prison, whatever that thing's called, um, chain lightning, immolate, firestorm, ice storm, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, yada, 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 okay? What, what is she going to do, right? Well, she's going to do everything but what I need her to do when I need her to do it. She needs to have revive, all right? readily available and barrier readily available because that's her job that is the role she's playing in this little machine that i built here all right and uh all that other stuff is secondary so i don't ask her to do a lot i have her uh i have her with winter's grasp because it does two things <clears throat> it not only immobilizes enemies but it um um does a little bit of damage you know at the same time okay so it, it has uh a dual effect there, and it can slow enemies, even the ones that are immune to freezing. It can still slow them and, and maybe do some minor damage and whatever. But uh, be that as it may, that's her like offensive thing, but it plays into more than one role, right? It also immobilizes enemies. We get bonus damage, right? But primarily, she needs to be able to cast Barrier as soon as it's available, right? And she needs to be able to cast Revive as soon as it's needed, right? She should be able to pick somebody up so the team doesn't get wiped. And then her specialist ability, well, her super ability is to revive, like, the entire team and replenish everybody's health and do all this other uh, super magnificent healing stuff, right? But um, she may have uh, one other uh, active ability in her specialist tree. She needs to have the ability to do that. And so I give her all the uh, mana regeneration passives that I can find and so on and so forth. And don't ask her to do too much, right? So the healer, let her do the healing role, right? Um, my tank, let my tank do the tank roll, okay? And for my DPS, let them, of course, do the DPS thing. And I hope that kind of makes sense, because what, what that allows you to do is, is instead of everyone being good at everything, which means they're actually good at nothing, it allows them to specialize and be really good in their one particular job, and if you put all those different jobs together, then you have a complete party, all right? So that's, that's the theory or, or the way that I operate um, when I build my team. Um, you can also think of it like this. When you build your team, build your entire team as you would build your main character. Don't try to um, put all the pieces in place with just your main character. Pick a role for your main character, fulfill that role, and pick skills that A, serve that purpose, whatever your, your main character is doing, whether you're tanking or being DPS mage, or being a healer mage, whatever you're doing, um, concentrate on that one specific thing, then all your skills not only um, support doing that, but also support everything else your, your party's doing, and then assign a role to your party. What do you want to do? Do you want to keep people constantly weakened, terrorized, and fleeing for your for their lives? Then you're going to want to have Dorian around, and you're going to be wanting to cast a lot of uh, terror. You're going to be wanting to um, uh, use a lot of fire spells and things of that nature to keep people you know, panicked and burning and terrorized, um, horror, and all that good stuff. See, for example, and so what all plays to that? And then, if an enemy is terrorized, how can you debuff that enemy to do less damage, take more damage, and then what other key skills do all your other party members have that can capitalize on the enemy's weakness based on what your party is doing? Like my party right here with my two-handed warrior build is built specifically on knocking down enemies, keeping them off balance, keeping them paralyzed, stunned, taunted, you know, and... and and constantly off balance. That's our job as a party, okay? And then each per per person fulfills their job making that happen. Does that make sense, all right? So all those abilities 
um, have two, three, four purposes, right? And, and all the passives and everything has synergy with everything else, all right? And so it means getting in there into the skill trees and picking out an ability here and a passive there and little different things that all, um, based on their brief descriptions, you can see all kind of fit together. Sometimes you have to dig into four or five different trees to do it. And you'll find all kinds of really cool combinations that make a, a really optimal build, all right? And so you can, like I say, as a party, you can have a particular role, just as your individual characters have a particular role. And you know, that house, I couldn't get onto the roof up there, but I came down here and I found a way here. This had this nifty wood beam, and I found a way to get up on this wall. I was actually pretty proud of this. And uh, yeah, this is almost over, just doing some exploring. Found a few hidden things. Uh, found that bottle down in the cellar of the uh, garrison up there. Figured I'd show you that. And uh, I think we have one more rampart to go discover. And then we'll be done um, recapturing all the places for the uh, Inquisition here. And then I think we'll go uh, deal with the elves after this. So that's probably where we're headed next. But uh, anyway, there you go. All right, so anyway, some just basic theory on party building and uh, team synergy and stuff. Something to keep in mind and get you through some of those situations that maybe you hadn't been before because the team had a, a particular weakness because somebody wasn't doing their job. And it really is that simple. So... Uh, Give that some thought and go take a fresh look at your skill trees and see if it doesn't make a difference. And if it doesn't, well, my bad. But if it does, well, well cool. Awesome. And see what you can do with that, and I'd be uh, glad to hear about it. So that's what the comment section below is for. All right. And until the next time, I'll catch you guys later. If you want to subscribe, hit that button on the top. Until later, y'all take care. Bye-bye.